Yeah, hun. I'm shutting down now. How's she doing? I mean, is it real or is it just panic because she doesn't want to go to practice? No, yeah, I know you know. But with her these days, why is 11 such a hard age? Isn't it supposed to all start at 13? Well, does she have a fever? I'm just saying, I don't want to force her to go, but she made a commitment. And she should learn that that means something. She can't just sniffle her nose and get out of things just because she wants to watch her sitcoms instead. Look, okay. I'll be home in 40 minutes. Tell her that she has that time to decide if she's sick or not. Is that fair? When I was a kid, I could be drowning in my own sick and my father would have made me go to practice. And I'm doing okay, right? My father and I don't talk for very many reasons. Not because of that. I don't want to make her do anything she doesn't want to do. But I think maybe she does want to do this, and she just won't admit it. She's growing up in Gotham. We're raising her and the boys here for a reason. She has to be a little tough. Being here means that things happen and you adjust, and not everything goes your way. She has to learn that. Look, I'll order a car and skip the train, get home a little faster, and I'll talk to her. I really think she wants to go. It's nerves. And if it's not, she doesn't have to. It'll work out. I'm in the car. I mean, I'm in the elevator now. Let me call you back and order the car. I can't even speak anymore. I'll call you back. One second. Love you too. Oh, John. How's it going? Going home early for my daughter's practice. Soccer. Which she hates, but sometimes she loves, and she's actually really good at it when she's not just... Yeah. This is your daughter, right? How old is she now? I still remember her at the picnic, jumping in the mud pile. Remember that? Everyone was dying. Super cute kid. Thanks, yeah. She's 11 now. That must have been... You know, that seemed impossible. When they're just trying to figure it out and jumping everywhere with no parachute, and all this new sh** is even harder? I don't know, man. Well, good luck, I guess. I'm sure it'll all be good. Thanks, man. Have a good one. <laughs> it's loading now. They'll be up. We've got it slowed down for this frame by frame. Here we go. So this Monday, as John Oates, our victim there, just got off work. Usually takes the train, but decides to tell a tar that day. Now watch on the left. And here's the Riddler. The gun's out by the time we catch him with the camera here. You see that right hand? Now in real time, this is just a few seconds. But no hesitation or anything. Can't see if he says anything. We looked and we didn't see movement in his mouth looking like he did. And there's the shot. People start to panic, running from the noise. Riddler brings the gun down to his side, doesn't target anyone else. People still running, he drops the gun next to the body of Oates. It stays there until we get it. Very calm, no screaming or anything like that. Professional, still not talking as far as we can tell. We got a patrol car now, coming his way. An officer half a block down, sprinting towards him, shouting. He hears that, no doubt. And he turns to the camera. And he smiles. Where is he?
he's not coming. He says, and I quote him directly here, Edward's not worth my time. Do you know what the oldest riddle is? From ancient Sumer, 4,000 or so years ago. There is a house where you enter blind and leave seeing. What house is this? John Oates. He popped him in the head in broad daylight, out on Wayne and Giordano, then waited for the cops to come. You got a reason? You owe him some money? You lose to him at poker or something? Maybe he slept with your girlfriend. You got a girlfriend? A school house. So is that a no on the girlfriend? You don't like that one? Riddle me this. How'd the Joker know you'd be home with Babs that day? How'd he know where you live? How did he get past your security? We both know him. He's a weird guy. Complicated. But never much of a planner. Hmm. Hey, Eddie. How's tricks? I want to do this whole one bad day thing, but I've got no idea where to start. Well, Jack, how about the commission and his daughter? I have the whole thing staked out, but it was so easy I got bored with it. I'll give it to you for a song. That would be perfect, Eddie. Tell you what, I'll throw in a dance for free. Ha, 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 ha. Click. You son of a- Jesus! You okay, Gordo? You seem upset. <sighs> oh no. Did people find out about Sergeant Essen? How, you know, f***ed her and then forced her to transfer? So you could hide your sexy affair from your pregnant wife? She worked for you, man. She had a career. And then, well, we know what came then, don't we? Poor thing. You come in blind and you leave seeing. What house is this? Did you not tell me you studied? I did, sir. I knew the whole book. I memorized it. Yes, of course, if it's fine tomorrow, said Mrs. Ramsey, but you'll have to be up with the lark, she added. I had hesitations about putting you in AP English at your age. I expected hard work to overcome these hesitations, and I seem to remember you telling me you studied. Headmaster, a 92 is still an A. You can ask Professor Yellen. It was the third highest score in the class. It's just, he added a stupid riddle for the last point, so that's just guessing doesn't have anything to do with preparation. I was prepared, sir. I swear. Third best? Congratulations. Sir, please. Edward, stop. You're wasting time that you obviously need for your learning. Let's get this over with so you can get back to the library. I... Yes, sir. Of course, sir. I think we shall go with the bard today. Tremble, thou wretch. That hast within the undivulged crimes unwhipped of justice. Yes, sir. I'm sorry, sir. Very well. Remember, whatever you do, both here and in life, be honest. Edward Tierney, are you the son of a whore? No, sir! I said, are you the son of a whore? No, sir! Whose son are you? I'm your son, father! I'm yours! Please! I'm yours! Father! Father! We pray now in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. I commend you, my dear Jonathan Henry Oates, to Almighty God, and entrust you to your Creator. May you rest in the arms of the Lord our God, who formed you from dust of the earth. May Holy Mary, the angels, and all the saints Welcome you now that you have gone forth from this life. May Christ, who is crucified for you, bring you freedom and peace. May Christ, who died for you, admit you into his garden of paradise. May Christ, the true shepherd, embrace you as one of his flock. May he forgive all your sins and set among those he has chosen. May you see your great Redeemer face to face and enjoy the vision of God forever. Bruce Wayne? Oh, yes. Pardon me, Ms. Oates. I was just leaving. I'm sorry for your loss. I... 
I don't think we've met, have we? Did you know my husband? He never said anything. No. No, I... I read about it. In the paper. I... You're soaking wet. Come on, we can share. There's a party. Not a party, a reception thing. An after-funeral thing. You know. You could come, if you wanted. But... But you don't have to. The kids are there. John's parents took them. My parents are... They can't travel. They're... They sent flowers. The kids are there. John's parents took them. My parents are... They can't travel. They're... They sent flowers. I should be there. Everyone's expecting me. They got a tray from the deli. Meats and pickles and cheeses. Breads. So you can make sandwiches. It's nice. There's even mustard and all that. They... The kids are waiting for me. I should go... Have some. A sandwich. But he's... He... He... He's under the dirt. My John. They buried him. I'm... Sorry. I... I should go. I should... God. It's alright. Please. Take your time. Okay. 30 seconds to go. The time of wastes and wastrels has passed. If you know them, write them. Seventeen seconds. Thirteen seconds. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two. So, how'd that go, Eddie? Are we having fun yet? I, well, I believe the the standard questions were well put and well answered. I think you'll find, Professor Yellen. The last, uh, the final, uh, the riddle was as unexpected as last time, so that was surprising. But I do believe I answered it correctly, sir. Incorrectly. Excuse me? What English word is most commonly spelled incorrectly? Incorrectly is spelled incorrectly. Oh. Eddie, life isn't about acquiring knowledge. Any schmuck can take crap in and vomit it out, you know. Blah. See, what I want from you, from everyone, is to learn what to do with knowledge. It's not just regurgitation, you know. It's recontextualization. Yes, right. That's very smart. Once you leave these vaunted halls, Eddie, you're going to see there are so many questions. Just questions all the way up and down. And there's, at the end of the day, there's no one who can answer them except you. That's the ugly and the beauty of it all. Incorrectly. I N C O R R E C T L Y. Riddle me this. Huh. Father. Father. Father, I'm here. Ready. I was wrong. It wasn't enough. Okay, now the gate, I'll tell you whatever you want, man. I worked for him for like years. No one knows more than me, man. I'm saying, I'm not lying or anything. I'll give you whatever it is, okay? I'm done. I'm f- tired of it. Please, what do you want? We used to talk, man. He ain't shy. And like gags he pulled or that, he didn't even know that. You don't even know, man. I know, and I know them all. No one knows him like I know him. I hint for him for like decades he always came to me first i know his favorite riddles i was good at him i'll give it to you okay it's yours i don't want it just not again okay it's cold and it cuts me when i hit and there's i want to breathe man that's no way to go out i'm ready i'm ready just you just don't do it anymore whatever you want i'm game please please just say yes 
Say yes, okay? Yes. Yes. No. Yes. Well, I mean, I guess. A bet's a bet. I just didn't think you could actually name every actress in the chorus of of cold diggers of 1933 that was certainly impressive next time I'll next time I'll think think of something harder to ask you He actually left instructions on how to bury him. It's actually a 120 page script. One lounge scene between a grave digger and him. We're supposed to chop him into 24 pieces, the number of frames per second in a unit of film. Then we're supposed to take a picture of each piece and edit them together to make a one second film. This film is set to premiere at Cannes, where it must be the first film shown at the festival. When, not if, but when the film wins the Palme d'Or, we have to take all the body parts and the award to the Grauman's Chinese Theater, where they will be reassembled and stuck in the country in the position that shows him holding the award. All of Hollywood is to be attendance, including his mother. Anyway, Film Freak's body is off to be burned. I'll have them throw the script in there with him. We can't link it to him. Directly to Nigma, I mean. As far as we can tell, they can't even hear each other through the walls. We reinforced that stuff years back, you remember. But we've moved Nigma to solitary, just in case. I don't want to find Twiddle Dumb and Twiddle D hanging. We asked him, of course, why and what and all that. He says he only talked to you. I press him. He says a lot of things. I don't want to get into that. He's not in a good mood. Maybe we should have had him isolated from the beginning. It's, I mean, Nigma has been in and out of Arkham for decades. This is how we've always handled it. I thought I was used to him, but all of this, I don't get it. What's the riddle? I mean, even this old case, we can't put it together. I've had a full team on it, looking for something, a clue. Let's be honest, in all this time we've known him, he has never done anything. I mean, Literally anything without presenting some moronic challenge first. It has to be there, but f We've gone back over every detail. Everything he's done. We've searched all of damn Gotham, and we can't find anything. There's no hints. There's nothing that we're missing. He's not subtle about that. So we try to look for some connection between Oats and Enigma. Maybe this was a killing of passion. Even crazy sometimes, that's a reason. But that's not there either. As far as we can tell, these two have never crossed paths. No one associated with either of them is associated with each other. I'm driving this as hard as I can, and crashing into dead end after dead end. The only lead we have is this Adam Rothman, one of his former henchmen, I'm sure you know him. Guy turned up on the Gotham shore, soaked to the bone, beaten up a bit, whining and moaning, scared out of his mind. But he won't talk either. Keep saying he said too much, whatever that means. So that's it. We've got nothing. I guess our hope here is... You. Please, come in. Hello, Professor Yellen. Hey, something I can help you with, Edward? Yes, I was preparing for the next exam, sir, and I would like to know if... If it was... If you were to, if you were going to have another riddle on it that is worth points, I would like to know. I feel it is unfair um, given school policy, and I would like to lodge an objection before the test is, before you give it. <sighs> it can't be easy being the son of the headmaster. Everyone here is from big East Coast families, blue bloods down the line. 
I imagine that's kind of frustrating at times, right? Like, are you trying to prove yourself to these people? Sir, with great respect, I do not believe it is fair. If you wish to make it extra credit, that is a different matter, but being unjust is not... It's not what we were taught here. You were in violation, and I will report you. You're a real good kid, Edward. Does anyone tell you that? You're smart, yes, but you're also, you know, you have your own cool to you. Maybe it's not everyone else's cool, but, but I see it. I want to encourage it. I want you to be proud of it. You should be. Sir, I don't want any more riddles. It's not fair. I love that you're doing this, man. You're Byron. You're rebelling. It's a natural and beautiful thing. And that's why the riddles are there. So you can face an obstacle, be frustrated by it, but then overcome it. It's okay not to know things. It's okay to have to struggle. That's what school is for. So when struggles hit you in life, you don't just crumble. Why? Why do you hate me? I don't, man. Honestly, no one does. I, I swear, listen, please. There's no hate in this. It's just learning how to find the answers. I'm sorry. I'm not doing anything right. I'm going to go. I'll, I'll do good. I'll get it right. Cool, man. Good to hear. No one's rooting for you more than I am. I have all the confidence in the world that you'll figure this out. My advice, nothing's worth this stress. Take a break for a second. Clear your brilliant head. Get a bite to eat. All right, Eddie. Early breakfast here. Hey, my daughter really liked that last one about what has a bottom at the top. She's been shouting it to her mother. Your legs, your legs. Dude, she was laughing. You got another one like that? Like a little dirty, but kid dirty. She loves any joke that has like a, a fart in it or something. You got one like that? Oh. Ah! Ah! Stop! Ah! Help! Frank! I need help! Help! Ah! Maybe your daughter would like this one. Wait, told me this. Stop. If two's company... Oh, please. Please. And three's a crowd. Ah. What's four and no. five? No. Do you have a guess? Ah. The answer is nine. Four and five are nine. Tell her that. I think she'll like it. It's a neat one because you don't see it. It's a neat one because you don't see it coming until it blows you away. Dana Tierney former headmaster at Andeater Academy. Get out. Your son recently killed a man. He always leaves a clue before he does. This time, he didn't. I'm trying to find out why. <laughs> I talked to one of his people. A few days before the murder, he dismissed all of his usual subordinates. He told them he had to take some time for an elderly parent. On his school records, you are listed as his only guardian. <laughs> Mr. Tierney, when was the last time you saw your son? Stop, you think I won't. Mr. Tierney, despite the rumors in the press, I am not omnipotent. I have an unfortunate weakness for mercy that has too often led to careless mistakes and lingering pain. However, the moment you fired that gun at me, I lost my taste for any mercy. So, as you pull that trigger, know that that weapon is aimed at you. That you are making a careless mistake. That your mistake will lead to lingering pain. You... Ugh. My son is an idiot. He can read at a year and a half. New Greek, Latin, and calculus by the time he was five. By twelve, he had another dozen languages, and was showing genius-level aptitude in every topic, from literature to genetics to music theory. To say he was a prodigy admits that others might occupy a category with him, and my son was unique. I dedicated my life to him, to ensuring that such potential would be nurtured, Developed in a fitting way. Every day, every night, we worked. And where my limitations showed themselves, 
I hired tutors. I spent my life saving on an army of learned men and women to expose them to every corner of academia. Finally, I was able to get him admission to the beloved and demanding academy to which I had dedicated my life. Due to his excellence in academics, they could not deny him, despite the fact that his mother, she was... She was not suitable to their standards. Regardless, there, though younger than most of his peers, he excelled. The only student in the history of the institution to earn perfect marks seven semesters straight. The only one. Mine. Teacher after teacher came to me to boast about the boy's intelligence, his potential to become a great scholar, a great man. We had seen the best children the world has to offer, and Edward exceeded them all. There are Waynes, and Holtz, and Luthers. I have known them, taught them, studied them. But next to my boy, <laughs> And still, he's an idiot. I have not spoken to Edward in 30 years. Since the basketball court in the... Since he started with that Enigma nonsense. Enigma? Oh, how clever. I will not speak to him again in my lifetime. He might have. There was no limit to him. But he made a choice. I gave him a path to follow. I laid out the bricks, placed him on a good horse, showed him the way, and let him go. And he... He pulled up on the reins. Turned the animal and giggled and trotted off to, to play. I did not wish to play with him. Why did he go? Why would anyone? It sure is a fun little riddle, isn't it? You should ask him. See if he can crack it. My son was blessed with a gift. Blessed! And he wasted on games. And such he has ruined his life! And mine! Is that enough to earn a little mercy? Where's his mother? Father! Edward, control your voice and your enthusiasm. This is an office, not a sporting stadium. S Father, s someone has... In the common room, th there's a... Spit it out, boy! All this huffing and puffing is embarrassing. Clearly, your physical education will be our next priority. There's a, a fire in the common room. Someone set off a firecracker and it caught the curtain and- Edward, why didn't you just say that? You peanut-headed boy! You stay here. I don't need you fainting at the first sight of danger in front of the whole class. And do not touch anything. Nothing. You hear me? Yes, father. And best of luck. All right, class, talking time is done. Eyes on me, everyone. Good, good, thank you. You guys look awesome. Now, I want everyone to take a deep breath in and out right now. And don't just breathe, feel yourself breathe. Be conscious of the air flowing into you and out of you. Just focus on that movement in, then out. Good, good. You've listened, you've noted, You've studied. Your preparation is finished. All that is left is your wit and your will. Look down at your paper. Pick up your pen. Let the test begin. I'd wish you luck, which if you are here, you already have, but you may not need. So instead, I'll wish you success. Which if you are here, you certainly do need, but may not yet have. What disappears when you say its name?